And now for a session produced by our underwriter, please welcome Catherine Blades, Aflac's Chief Brand and Communications Officer, Jane Randall, co-founder of No More, and Muna Ellison, publisher of NY Moves Magazine. Well, welcome everyone. Wow, that's loud. <laughs> Um, I'd like to begin by uh, thanking our panelists, uh, Catherine and Jane, who are joining us here today, and, and everybody who are probably um, heavy through the day on everything that's going on. So let's kick straight in um, and begin with um, the survey that took place with regards to consumer and human resource managers that find issues like harassment um, and equal pay with women in workplaces um, it, and the priorities of these that affect businesses. So how about Catherine, I go straight into asking yourself that question. You know, tell me a little bit about what that means to you. Well, it's very important, but first of all, thank you guys for being here. And thanks to Atlantic Media for putting together such rich content and fantastic dialogue about such important subjects. It's great to be here on behalf of AFLAC. So every year we do a corporate social responsibility survey and we try and marry it to trends in the workplace. And this year, clearly Me Too is the biggest thing that came out of the media. So we wanted to survey human resources professionals and rank and file employees to find out what's going on in the workplace really when it comes to sexual harassment and what companies should be doing about it. And we learned a lot of interesting things. First and foremost is over 90% of human resources professionals think they're doing a fantastic job of letting their employees know what their policies are. And guess what? <laughs> 40 to 45 percent of employees can't even tell you whether or not their company has a policy on sexual harassment. So we've got a long way to go and that's what the survey tells us. So uh, Jane, tell me a little bit about your take on that. I know that you're the founder of um, a, a preventative domestic violence and sexual um, assault. Mm -hmm. um, so take picking up what Catherine's saying on how people are not aware yep. of what they can and can't do and can and can't share. Um, how does that impact uh, your, your, um, the founder of what you're about? <laughs> um, you know, people have, Me Too has been amazing and it's enabled people to um, talk about issues that they've never been able to talk about, never felt comfortable talking about. But it also means that companies have to be able to adapt and that's a little bit been harder based on what the survey found. Um, not surprising to any of you, you all laugh when Catherine said that, you know, there are policies in place and no one knows what they are. And then also a lot of times, you know, people say, okay, we have to have a policy and they check the box. It's digital. You can go back when you mess up and figure it out. And now the box has been checked and everyone has done their sexual assault, sexual harassment training. Um, but it really is a culture issue. And it's about creating a culture inside an organization from the very top of the organization that enables people to come forward if they have a concern without being, um, fear of, of retaliation, but also being able to say to somebody, you know what, I'm really uncomfortable when you say that to me or when you put your hand here or whatever it may be. Because a lot of it is much more subtle. We all know the things we sh really shouldn't do, mm -hmm. but there's also a lot of other, you know, everyday gender bias, the interrupting people, women when they're speaking or, um, you know, addressing somebody else's idea. I'll tell a really fast story. I was at a, a place, um, I was in an office yesterday in a meeting and we were waiting, we needed an IT guy. And there were two women with a computer on one side of the table and one man with a computer on the other side of the table. And the IT guy comes in, walks right around and goes right over to the man and says, do you need IT? And it was actually the women that needed the IT. They were presenting, it was their meeting. And that's just one example always of everyday gender bias that happens all the time. Right. Well, and it goes deeper than that um, in terms of sexual harassment. Another thing that the survey showed was that one in four women in the workplace has been sexually harassed. That is an astounding number. And for some reason, and we don't know why, Hispanic women index higher. Hmm. So that may be the survey for next year to dig a little deeper. Yeah. 
So from the foundings, um, obviously the objective is, is that we, we, find, we find ways to overcome and, and um, resolve and be solution oriented and I think naturally women are solution oriented uh, the, the survey that AFLIC conducted um, and the findings of that, what's the goal and, and how's that sort of going to come back and uh, deliver something that will now give us results and, and make it an action? Well, corporate social responsibility is a moving target. As society evolves and new issues become more prevalent, this gives us an opportunity to dig in and find out where we need to provide education for impact, for action, so that we can either stem the tide or look at trends that are actually positive and hopefully drive those forward so, so society can be better off in the workplace, can be a better place. Fantastic. Thank you. Great answer. Um, so Jane, just talking about the um, workplace and how the changes are taking place and how baby boomers um, and the new generation are taking over, um, how are these changes in the landscapes uh, uh, for corporate and social responsibility? So I'm going to have to talk about millennials, which is always upsetting only because I'm not one. Um, and so you end up talking about this whole group. But we all know that people want, millennials in, in particular, want purpose. I mean, that's why we're here, right? The power of purpose. They want to know that the companies they work for are doing good. They want to feel like they're coming to work every day and contributing in some way. Um, and they will be very quick to smell inauthent inauthenticity. And it's very important that companies realize that. It's a way to ret retain, recruit, um, reward talent, engage talent. And it's something that is um, really key in the workplace these days. And so, Catherine, uh, picking up from what Jane is saying there and taking it right back to yourself on how do we make companies more uh, responsible um, for what they're actually putting out there as messaging, which is obviously not reaching the employees, and is that a conscious effort? Is that something that they are doing because obviously nobody ever is frightened of the results? Um, or is it something, well, because obviously it's very clear that a lot of people are frightened to speak up. Um, how do we overcome that? How do we make people feel safe in their environments, but also achieve the commitment and loyalty that employees are looking for from their employers? Well, what gets measured gets done. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to hold somebody accountable for something, make it part of their goals and objectives that they're actually reporting out on on a regular basis. And it works. I'll, I'll give you an example. AFLAC is actually at parity in gender pay. There are not a lot of companies that can say that, but we have the second longest tenured CEO behind, you can applaud that. <laughs> uh, thank you. We have the second longest tenured CEO behind Warren Buffett and the For Fortune 200. Our president of AFLAC US is an African-American female. Our general counsel for AFLAC Incorporated is an African-American female. That didn't happen overnight. There are six female senior leaders in an insurance company, if you go look at our website, which is phenomenal. Now, the ladies I mentioned, most of which have been with the company for more than 20 years, someone, namely our CEO, created those opportunity paths so that they could get the skills and experience and tenure they needed to be able to roll up into those roles. It did not happen by accident. Someone wrote it down and then made it real. And that's what needs to happen. Right, excellent, great answer. And picking up from the CEO, Dan, he has a go-to line, which I think is fantastic. I am an old white man. This is Dan speaking uh, verbatim. I am an old white man. I know what old white men think, and I don't want that to be running my company. I mean, I think that's amazing for somebody to say at that level and to have an appreciation for women are problem solvers by nature. And it is hard fact, and you can talk to this, and I'm sure you can too, is, is that uh, uh, boardroom level, uh, for women to be engaged at that level only increases bottom line. What are men frightened of? Well, I'm not going to speak for men. <laughs> I will let the data. I won't speak for millennials, and you won't speak for men. Um, I'll let the data speak for itself, because frankly, companies, public companies specifically, 
with better female representation on their boards of directors do better financially. And the numbers don't lie. Right. Absolutely. Touche. And to that, I, I, what, what would you like to add, Jane? Well, I just want to talk, go back to Dan and, and the way he runs the company and the way he talks. That's culture, right? That's culture change. To your point, Catherine, it's very intentional. Um, it is not by accident. It is a way to create an environment where people feel like they can succeed and come forward and thrive. I'd like to thank everybody for participating and listening to our um, talk today. And I'd like to thank Catherine and Jane for joining us and the audience for their participation. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>